I'm defined. Hard labor, I came here to modify the system. Take them down if they ain't listen. Straight demolition. From young, everything resisting. Good times, I don't really miss them. Gotta pay the cost, no tick. Wick, this hard labor and I'm kick. Never fit in with the crowd or got into politic. You can tell I'm built different. Trust me. It'll be a sequence of events if you touch me. Even when the women do it, love. I've been out of great people, but you'll be mistaken if you put another one above. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Tyranny, the most hardcore news show on earth. It is Saturday today. It's March 16th, 2024. This is episode 67. Welcome back, everyone. I am your host, Conrad Rogas. This week, I've had a busy week. Uh, I've had a new position in in construction. Still the same line of work, but new work environment, for sure, new responsibilities. I've been all over the city of Chicago this week, about 10 different houses and buildings all throughout the city, different areas, downtown, south, you know, north suburbs, the rich ones, the not-so-rich ones. So... With all that said, it's a perfect week for the topic because the Chicago mayor, Brandon Johnson, has introduced something called the Clean and Affordable Buildings Ordinance, or Cabo. It's funny that they name it Cabo. Uh, it's like a Cabo's a vacation destination. Um, it's, it's not so much a vacation type of thing. But real quick before I start, it is March 16th, so something that I might do is on this day in the history of tyranny march 16th is actually the anniversary of the my lai massacre in vietnam in 1968 i mentioned that on a previous episode and that was a day where by american soldiers that in vietnam american soldiers killed 500 women and children basically all women and children with no weapons in a village in vietnam so before i even get going let me just throw that in uh what does it have to do with this episode? Not much, other than um, that is how much a civilian's life is worth. And where people are in fear, you're going to get massacres, death, starvation, suffering. Hey, this is the background I come from. I'm I'm Polish. Uh, you know, back in my lineage, we got Holocaust survivors. We got underground freedom fighters. We have people being killed by tyrannical systems and and their paramilitary groups just for being who they were so that's where i'm coming from and where is where's the chicago clean and affordable buildings ordinance coming from well the clean and affordable buildings ordinance cabo would eliminate harmful natural gas emissions by sending an indoor emissions limit banning the combustion of fuels that emit more than 25 kilograms per btu effectively requiring all new construction to switch to clean power sources like electric or high efficiency systems so translation they're banning the gas stoves they're banning the gas furnaces the gas boilers and the gas heaters uh, they haven't done it yet but they've introduced the ordinance this matter in the city of chicago and this i mean we're not saying that everybody had to transition we're just saying about new structure, new developments that are coming up, they should focus more on electrification in opposed to using gas stoves. This is a beginning because it's inevitable. It's going to happen, y'all. We're going to have to change. And the change is among us. We're talking about our future generation. And this is actually not here in March. This was announced at a city council meeting in January. Uh, the reason I'm talking about it now is because I just discovered it now. I didn't even know about this. So I, I will link it so you could watch. You could watch the video here. You could watch how soulless and corrupt the political leadership of the city of Chicago is. Talk to anybody who lives here. They'll tell you all. You know, the, But that's that's nothing new, right? We wave, we shake our head at the politicians and say, yeah, of course they're corrupt. But in Chicago especially, they've kind of got that mafia air to them. They kind of have that, you know, wise guy mob energy the the corruption here is palpable it's it's kind of it's different and i think you could see that if you will watch some of that that i'll link they actually read off the script of course that's nothing new um, that's a lot like the episode from last week with new york the governor uh, the, her reading off of the script and being full of it but anyway this flew under the radar i didn't discover it in january or february i 
towards the end of March, I find out about this. It flew under the radar as do many of the most harmful actions in this world. They're done that way. They are passed, laws are passed, ordinances, whatever you want to call them. They're passed in the middle of the night or they go uh, They go into effect quietly. They're, uh, they're, they're not given the fanfare. They're not put in, in the news. And one of the reasons for that is that it's an ordinance, meaning it's not a law. It's, it's not a law. It's not even a bill. And ordinances are not treated with the same scrutiny as laws. This is the thing. Just like guidelines are not given the same scrutiny as mandates. If that sounds familiar, you, you know what I'm talking about. We didn't have really mandates for a long time. During the pandemic, we had guidelines, but everybody had to f follow the guidelines. And they effectively were like orders and rules, but they were just called guidelines. And it is the same with an ordinance. It's It sounds less important. It sounds less serious. But the only thing that matters is, do they have the power to enforce it? Are they going to enforce it? Yes or no? And the answer is yes, before we even get into it. They will enforce this. So... Like I said, I came across this this month, right? This week, I came across it on a YouTube advertisement before before this video. You know, get, letting go of YouTube Premium has been one of the better decisions I've made because I actually see some of these ads, and of course, I don't allow them to personalize the, the ads. I don't want to be targeted. I want to see what they're targeting the people with. So this was an advertisement that was about this clean and affordable building ordinance. It was. Uh, another youth action group i don't know their name it's not really relevant but there were young people that had the air of activism you know people that are passionate about something they're fighting against injustice they may have even sound a little bit like me but that's the thing so whenever i see youth activists people protesting especially people who are in these advertisements in speeches in front of people gaining so garnering support for some type of social cause or some type of law i always think uh oh we got some tyranny here and the reason is because groups of young activists young people they're not self-generated and independent like this week in tyranny is these groups m most almost all groups of young people fighting for a particular cause they're sponsored and they're organized so who is sponsoring them? Who is sponsoring the Cabo, the Clean and Affordable Buildings Ordinance? Well, here you can uh, you can read it's supported by a coalition of more than 50 consumer, community, environmental, environmental justice and faith organizations. Um, this is by the Citizens Utility Board. This is what I was trying to think of uh, is their name. Anyway, I'll link it. But these organizations they speak of, these are the same organizations that happened to support the government during the pandemic. It is these kinds of organizations. So, you know, I don't think it should be called Cabo. I think it should be called CBO, the Safe and Effective Buildings Ordinance. Safe and Effective, remember, because they didn't tell you these organizations about the hard problems and the lack of protection from that vaccine they were giving you. They told you it was safe and effective. So they might as well say the same about this. So why should we listen to the same organizations on what kind of energy is clean and efficient? Right? That's that's the same kind of two buzzwords. Safe and effective, clean and efficient, clean and affordable. Yeah? It even has the same tone, tempo, and role. Right? It's a rhythmic, it's actually a rhythmic mind control. But hey this kind of ordinance is already affected in new york and california already and i haven't known about that either i think you haven't either right this is new to us but it's been in effect so california new york these happen to be the places that are aligning as you know the tip of the spear at the front lines of tyranny this is where the most tyranny is last week is about new york with the subway system national garden subways what about california banning the sale of of gas cars right this is a hey, same lines all electric vehicles you know a, a company can't make anything in in california because everything is a carcinogen of course these were the harshest lockdowns of course in in these areas 
So the harshest controls and the highest living costs, the highest living costs you're ever going to find are going to be New York and Los Angeles and uh, through California. They're there. Harshest controls, highest living costs. And in that, it leads the way for the rest of the country. The rest of America follows them. People say there's such a dichotomy, there's such a polarity between the red states and the blue states. Well, the reality is the red states follow. They just lag behind. So the rest of the country follows New York and California, and Chicago follows them. And then as they go, the rest of the country slowly follows them. And the rest of the world, they all follow us in America. And this is how it goes. This is why it's important. But of course, they claim that it will lower utility costs, improve public health, create jobs, and reduce pollution. They got four claims. So we're going to talk about their four claims. Let's take them in mix order. One, how's it going to create jobs? Okay, creating jobs. So all new buildings that are going to be built in the city of Chicago are going to have only electric appliances. Everything electric, the stove, the heater, anything that's bringing the air in, taking the air out. And anything that's needed for uh, for water, right? No gas boilers. It's going to be an electric water heater. That's new buildings and also all additions to existing buildings, old buildings that increase the area by 25% or more. I work with existing buildings, right? Old buildings. So any addition that's going to be in the city of Chicago, that's going to significantly increase uh, the size of a home by 25% or more. I can think of one already. This is my first week on the job. So I know one of them that, that would definitely... Uh, be under this new ordinance they would have to switch they have to switch to electric so how it creates jobs is that you're going to have new installers needed to put these electric heat pumps in that use refrigerants it's it's not really used often they have you know um, they have gas so we're used to gas in general in, in the city and today's hvac guys the heating vent uh, you know air conditioning guys they're not used to installing them and servicing them in fact when you look a lot of these up you'll see people on YouTube telling you how to do it wrong there's a lot of misinformation about that right so you're gonna have new jobs because you're gonna need to have these new professionals who are gonna put these things in th this new technology in for you and of course repair them because you're going to have them break down so that's fine right if it's better it's better uh, this is how the market goes you you old jobs old technology becomes obsolete you get new jobs people that know how to install the new stuff fine and creating jobs sounds good but when the existing positions today's heating guys that i work with when they're given to the same kind of people that just love any new technology just because it's green just because it's innovative right when they love electric cars because they like the look, they like that it's smart. Everybody wants to be smart, you know. Everybody wants to be socially approved. They, you know, they love the electric cars. They love nuclear power. Nuclear power is supposed to be so great. They love nuclear power. They support every new technological endeavor that the government undertakes. That's these people, you know. Not to make any personal judgments, but I think you could see the the picture I'm painting that what type of people you're giving these jobs to when they get the existing jobs that's not good for the city of chicago what it means is that the ancillary tentacles right the the outer tentacles of the state they've extended their tentacles to to reach to have more reach more control more of a grasp on the people uh, and these these installers look they don't i'm not saying they're bad guys they're not but all, all i'm saying is by the nature of their profession, they're aligned more closely with the state and the state's uh, chemical, biological, and scientific, pseudoscientific alignments. They're aligned with clean and renewable, which all that means is it's the stuff that they control. It's the stuff that's centralized. It's, it's the stuff that replaces the established ways of production and manufacturing that have created the prosperity of America, unprecedented prosperity, unprecedented freedom. Uh, and I've talked about this connection, how related that is to the Industrial Revolution, and really, this is what it's all about. But not to get off topic, 
I'm actually just going to cut to the chase here. Why am I so concerned with the gas appliances going away? What's up with this guy? Does he love gas appliances? Do I just sit there in the kitchen and look at my stove? No, I don't give a damn. But I, what I give a damn about, I'll list off my reasons in order. The main thing here is we're going to have a reduction of options. This reduces our options. We don't have a lot of options. We don't have free energy, but we have the choices between electric and, and gas. And this takes away that option. It's a reduction of options. I've talked about this with the gas cars. Why is it a problem to have only electric cars and no gas cars? Because you no longer have freedom to travel. You can only take your electric car so far out of the city until you are stuck. Your range of travel is limited because you will not find a charging station. You are dependent on whoever provides the electricity to the charging station. If any charging station is just, if they put a cap on the damn outlet, if they just put an electronic blockade, if they put any sort of new requirement that you cannot meet, you will not be able to charge your electric vehicle. It has reduced your travel options. You can put tank, you can put gas in a tank, gas in a gas canister, then put it into your tank and you can go cross country, you can go wherever you want, you can drive across the open borders, you can get out of there, you can avoid tyranny, you can help your family, you can go make a supply run, you can go chop down a tree, you can go bug out in the woods with a gas car, you won't do it with electric. That's your reduction of options. This is the main point. The second point, or you could say equally as important, is the power grid. You're switching to electric, everything is fine, we're all going to switch to electric power. It's all well and good until the power goes out. And of course, the more electric vehicles there are, the more it increases the strain on the power grid, right? More powerful electronics, which we're having more of, we're having more and more powerful electronics and appliances, that will increase the strain on the power grid. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been noticing the idea of power outages becoming more of an issue in recent years it's certainly talked about more you know just this week uh, in the middle of the week i went to floor and decor to pick up some tiles and then there's a sign on the door sorry power outage and that's it and and right as i went to the door the power came on actually but uh, the guy inside said they can't let anyone in to wait 15 minutes. So I went to another store, I got some more materials, and then I went back and got my tiles. But hey, there's a power outage in the city of Chicago. It just happens to be that way. With the more of the extreme weather power outages, you would think they would become more of an issue. And we've already heard the talk about so-called terrorists attacking the power grid. Right? We've heard that all the time an EMP attack. Hey, do you, are you going to trust that? Why would you reduce your options in that way? And along those lines with the power grid, even if it does hold up and we don't get left without power, this is centralization of power, of electricity. It's all going to be controlled by the electric company. It's already a, a, somewhat of a monopoly that you have these big companies, just like the big three or four news companies that control all the information, all the newspapers, you know, all of the um, media publications. Hey, now you're reducing it and it's all in on the electrical company. So that's not good for the people. Reduction of options is always going to cost you more for a, a lesser product, a inferior product and a lesser service. And what about the cyber attacks they keep talking about? Because I know you've heard about that. I've talked about the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report. And they say cyber attacks are some of these big threats in the coming two years, ten years. I don't know about you, but I've been getting all these emails about data breaches. Almost every account that I have in any kind of website, any kind of organization, there was a data breach. And you may have been affected of this hacking stuff, right? First they say it's Chinese hackers, then it's Russian hackers. Doesn't matter who it is, the, the fact is th they've sounded these alarm bells about information not being as secure electronically. And Facebook had a huge outage uh, two weeks ago, I believe. I was at Sherwin-Williams buying paint and uh, I heard them talking about Facebook being down. 
yesterday, on Friday, McDonald's had a global outage. McDonald's, their technology systems failed somehow. And look, this is what happens with electric and electronic systems. They could just go down. One small error, and the whole thing crashes. The whole thing goes down. It needs to be a constant supply of communication. So one wire gets cut, and you got no power. You're out of power. That's how it goes. And technically, it's the same thing with gas, if there was a gas leak. But gas pipes are resilient, right? You can't just... Your gas isn't going to go away. Especially with the type of gas you put in a car. You put it in a tank, and you have it. You can store it. You have control. You're not attached to a grid. The word grid should always set off alarm bells. When I think of grid, I think of bars on a prison. I think about you know, a square that you cannot escape where there's no, there's no art, there's only repetitive motions, that's a grid. You're on a grid, we're, we're in a smart grid, a control grid. So, there's that. Uh, let's talk about electric stove versus gas stove. The, you know, I'm not a stove enthusiast. I don't use the stove often at all. I would probably never use the stove, actually. I use the Thermomix, which is electric. But the thing about your electric stove is you have less temperature control. Again, reduction of options. You cannot warm your food if your power goes out in the winter. You don't have a stove. You don't have a stove if the power goes out because it's electric. It's not actually a fire, you know. For those of you who have electric stoves, it's just going to heat up an element, and that's going to heat up your food. But it won't heat it up evenly, and you can look at the disadvantages of electric stoves. It's it's just not even. It's not an actual fire that you can control, that you can increase and decrease, instantly change it. No, no you are you heat up this hot plate, this, this big element, metal element, and then if you heat it up too high, you basically have to move it to a different... Uh, to a different heating element because that one has already gotten hot there's that and you can't cook at high temperatures like if you want to cook over 500 degrees like a lot so a lot of ethnic cooking you know a lot of different cultures need to cook high food you can't cook high food with electric it caps your temperature actually not because not to decrease it but just because it's it's not real fire, right? So, so there's limitations to it. That's your stoves. Let's talk about the electric heat pump against the gas furnace. The electric heat pumps I talked about. Now, basically, what those do is they control the flow between hot. There's a temperature on the outside and a temperature on the inside. And they're basically like air conditioners mixed with refrigerators. So they'll bring in the hot air and put, take the cold air out or vice versa. Now, that there's a high installation cost with those. Of course, it requires those trained professionals that I talked about. They've lightened, actually, those costs because there's a lot of federal grants, especially in Canada. They're encouraging people to get these electric heat pumps, right? Instead of central heating, instead of gas heating. What, what, now, why is the government interested in having people switch? Well, this is the whole point. I'll talk about it more. Now, an interesting concept is that heat pumps don't actually generate heat. Uh, not the way that a boiler will. They, they just move air from outside to inside, from hot to cold, from cold to hot. The cool thing about them is, is that the same unit will work for air conditioning as for heating. It'll just flow the other way. So this is good, but the way that works is the refrigerant gases inside, they make up the difference, right? And they work, but to me, the ability to generate heat is crucial. You want to generate the, the actual heat. I don't want a coil or a plate that gets hot and then I put my eggs on it to make scrambled eggs. I want to be able to create the actual fire. I want to create the fire. I want to adjust it as needed. I want to make a big flame or a little flame. Okay. So... Okay, these electric heat pumps, they're cost efficient and they're energy efficient. Yes, as long as it does not get too cold. Extreme weather definitely takes a big shot at how these things work. And because of freezing, 
in temperatures below, like at zero Fahrenheit and below, they they don't actually work. So so if you get a deep freeze, you might freeze to death if you don't have gas heating. That's a big deal, especially with the weather control that you know I talk about all the time. Other people have talked about. I wouldn't bet on that. What if the temperature does go down? We have a deep freeze. We have minus 20. Has that not happened in Chicago? It's been happening. Every few years, it seems like there's a deep freeze. Uh, what if the power grid goes down then? You know, What if it breaks down then? What kind of a repair can you do in, in that type of deep freeze where a compressor, you can't turn it on for a compressor to go work outside because it will freeze. The, the water slash air in the compressor turns to ice. So, wait, but this touches on point number two, reducing pollution, right? That's another thing that's supposed to be good about this. And I could talk about this forever, what the actual level of pollution is. I have talked about nuclear power pollution. That is rarely talked about. People say it's clean, it has no pollution. No, there is pollution with nuclear power. I talked about nuclear testing being the reason for all these greenhouse gases if indeed greenhouse gases are the causes of climate change like they say and here's a book about that i talked about it it's called a plausible truth about climate change the hansen hypothesis by clay hansen what really causes global warming and how it can be attenuated he talks about the underground nuclear bombs that they're setting off the testing and even above ground the, just the nuclear bombs that are being blown up and how that nuclear radiation is creating is releasing greenhouse gases okay so that's just an example i'm not even saying that that's a significant cause of climate change but there you go right and they say electric power is more efficient than gas they say this all the time but what they don't tell you is it took the electric company three times as much gas to make the electricity because they do it that way too they burn the gas to create electricity in the classical uh, power plant scenario not in nuclear but then hey nuclear is a different story so that's just one of those loopholes you know there are loopholes and technical conversations and debates that that people get into i'm not that much of an i'm not an expert in this so they get into all that i won't i won't get into that and really it doesn't matter what the pollution offset is. It doesn't matter how much pollution it is. The earth can handle pollution. The earth is resilient. The earth will remove humanity when it pollutes too much. And it is doing that. It, it is doing that. It is removing humanity because of the mental and spiritual pollution that we have allowed to ourselves. Abuse of children, abuse of animals, and abuse of ourselves, of course you know treating ourselves and each other with no care and no respect we've all done that we're all guilty of that including me so that is the real pollution yeah next point of contention we've got improving public health so public health obviously yes methane gas is bad for you right it's the gas is bad for you no argument there but those refrigerant gases in the electric heat pumps they're just as bad arguably worse and they are talking, all of a sudden there's this big talking point about childhood asthma, that how horrible gas stoves are for children, that they're giving these children asthma. And I say, give me a break and shut the fuck up about children's health. Because apparently giving children 40 vaccines just to go to first grade wasn't a problem for you. So your expert opinion on children's health isn't worth a fuck to me. See, pregnant women, they've been told to take vaccinations during their pregnancy. They've been told to circumcise their babies. They've been told to get them off of breastfeeding and get them in the crib and sleeping alone as soon as possible. And back in the day, the government used to say that DDT, the pesticide, was a perfectly normal and, and fine thing to spray on children, that it was safe. So f to all of them, I say shut the fuck up about children and their health because we don't trust them there's there's no reason to trust the government about what they say about health the real threat to public health has always been physical violence to regular people done by violent groups whether they're mobs 
or gangs or police or special forces, paramilitary or foreign soldiers. That's what I'm concerned with. That's the real threat to public health that always has been. And the last point, save the best for last, the lower utility costs. They're, they're telling you that you're going to save money by switching to electric. And indeed, this is the selling point. This is what they're banking on, to save money. But what it really is, is an economic war, right? Now, is gas high? Gas prices and natural gas prices, are they high? Yeah, they are. Why are gas prices high? So we've had this thing called the Inflation Reduction Act. I've talked about it on an earlier episode. This was signed August 29th, 2022, and it introduced a tax on gas. Guys, gas is methane, right? It's CH4, four hydrogen atoms centrally bonded to a carbon atom. That's what it is. It's carbon. Gas comes from petroleum. Guys, it's carbon, right? No one believed Alex Jones 20 years ago. I've talked about it. Many people have talked about it. People laugh. The carbon tax is actually here now. This is a carbon tax. I'm going to read about it. The carbon tax is actually here, and, and I didn't know this. It went under the radar for me. And this is how it works. This is the long-term economic war. The carbon tax is in effect today. It's federal. I'm quoting from it. This is a direct quote. This emissions charge is the first time the federal government has directly imposed a charge, fee, or tax on greenhouse gas emissions. So, everyone from Biden apologists to Trump supporters, you can please now stop talking shit. Don't talk any more shit about any prices, gas prices, anything about the economy based on what youtube podcasters say or what joe rogan says or anybody says fuck that read the government documents here it is i'm linking it this is from the government's actual records carbon tax this is the 1.7 trillion build back better act the build back better bill back in 2021 direct quote the charge starts at $900 per metric ton of methane, increasing to $1,500 after two years. So here it is. You can see it for yourself. So how much is that? $900, $1,500 does not sound like a lot. So how much is it? How much are they really paying? Let's get to the nitty gritty, right? The reported methane emissions in 2019 was 78.3 million metric tons of methane. That's gas. So let's multiply that by 1,500, right? 1,500 is the methane tax, a.k.a. the carbon tax. And that's $117.45 trillion. Over $100 trillion that the gas company will have to pay in just one year. Just one year. $117 trillion. How does that work? Where is that money coming from? And where is it going to? Right? The EPA. Where's this money going to? And the government quietly acknowledges, again, direct quote, since its inclusion in the House passed HR 5376, the methane charge has received considerable attention from members and a range of stakeholders. For example, some groups have raised concerns about economic impacts resulting from the methane charge, including impacts on natural gas prices. Some policymakers are concerned about the charge in context of EPA's proposed regulations to address methane emissions from the same categories of new and existing facilities that are subject to the methane charge, meaning double taxing them. There's a potential for double taxing them, meaning putting regulations on top of regulations and putting a stranglehold on these gas companies. And of course, earlier on they said, uh, they acknowledge the impacts on natural gas prices. Yes, not impacts on natural gas prices. This is essentially how through a buffer zone, the government directly controls prices. Guys, we are in Stalinist Russia. We are in the Soviet Union, the Soviet United States of America. Okay, the government can do this and actually increase the price with the regulations they've put on them. We are in communism today. 
there's just a layer of separation and everybody blames the corporations everybody blames the greedy corporations where it's the damn government it's the people in front of the podium it's always been the people in front of the podium you have to take you have to hit at the root of political and military power because ultimately this is who controls the military i've talked about the biggest public health threat it's always been people with guns and knives ready to do violence who controls that the government that is who it is and i've heard all this talk about the greedy gas companies raising their rates everybody's mad at who raised their rates everybody's mad at the gas prices right that's that's all everybody's mad at i've heard all about people's gas and how greedy they are about how people have to choose between paying their gas bill or buying a meal today yeah but no one no one is talking about this the way the government has imposed this tax on them they're killing these companies no one including their own executives and their own representatives their own pr people the gas people are not talking about it why because they do not want to face the beast the beast that is the global plan that is being carried out by today's government and corporations alike yeah and if you want to see all of this described all of this described 70 years ago you can read a book called atlas shrugged it'll tell you all about it just this you'll see it play out yeah or if you don't you know if this doesn't float your boat you could click on this lecture called the anti-industrial revolution and it'll tell you all you need to know this this pattern has been known it's an old pattern it's happened before it's going to happen today and, and specifically in the way it happened here slowly without violence without direct revolution it'll happen slowly now the main idea with Cabo with with clean and affordable buildings ordinance the thing about this stuff and with carbon emissions reductions I'm gonna get to the point here and just finish the show off nice and clean the main idea is to convince you to accept less that's what it's all about toilets with less water when you flush them you've heard you've seen this right using less water to brush your teeth using less food you know not buying as many things not having as many pairs of shoes eating less food uh, slower traffic fewer street lanes you know fewer deliveries so that there you don't put as many trucks on the road slower traffic reducing the traffic reducing the lanes smaller parking spaces less heat control on your damn stove this is all the stuff this is what you're being convinced to accept and the secret to life is actually to never accept less that's the secret to life to happiness in life never accept less do not accept less than you are worth don't don't accept less money for your work don't accept less in relationships don't be with somebody who's not treating you well and and never stay with somebody who doesn't respect you don't ever accept less than you deserve that's the key to freedom in this world and i'll end it there and i'll see you next week on this week in tyranny in this tournament, the chosen few shall be triumphant and the devil will be decapitated. So you can keep your ducats and your dresses. I won't be emasculated, emasculated. in this world of scientific madness. Scientific madness. My status is the baddest.